2.2. Our goal today is to find slopes of lines and rates of change. Those terms are interchangeable. You might remember from Algebra 1, to find the slope of a line, you calculate the rise over run. There's a formula for that. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. On the graph, the rise is the y change. The run is the x change. The line goes uphill. From left to right, that means we have a positive slope. Downhill would be a negative slope. Go ahead and read this example and try to calculate the slope. Notice when you include the units, they cancel each other out, so we have no units at all in our slope this time. Sometimes we will have a s units in our slope. That's when we start calling it a rate of change. Standardized test practice, same kind of problem, except this time we don't have a graph. We have points, so we have to use the formula. This is a pretty straightforward problem. Once we get through the formula, we see we get negative 4 over 3, which is choice A. At this point, you can pause the video and try some on your own, or you can do those later. Okay, I kind of talked about this at the beginning of the lesson. If we see an uphill line, we've got a positive slope, downhill line, negative slope. Then if we see a flat line, we call that a zero slope or horizontal. If we see a straight up and down line, we call that an undefined slope or a vertical line. What we see here is this is typically once we go through our process, we get zero for our answer. Here we get something divided by zero which is undefined. This next example tells us to, without graphing, tell whether the line rises, that would mean positive slope, falls, that would be negative slope, horizontal, that would be a zero slope, or vertical, that would be an undefined slope. To figure out any of those, we have to find the slope of each line first. After going through and finding all your slopes, which I recommend you try on your own, you can then look at the numbers. Since I see a zero, that means I must have a horizontal line. A negative slope means we fall. Positive slope means we rise. When we have an undefined slope, that means we stay vertical. It's a matter of looking at the numbers and their sign. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can continue on. A couple words you might also recognize from Algebra 1. If two lines have the same slope, we say the lines are parallel. If two lines have different slopes, but they are the opposite reciprocal, that means the lines are perpendicular. Opposite reciprocal means the signs are different, and one slope is just flip, the multiplicative inverse of the other. To give an example of numbers for perpendicular, we might have a 5 over 7. Perpendicular would be negative 7 over 5. Or we might have a 3 or a negative 3. Perpendicular would be change that to a positive and flip the sign. Negative 3 is really negative 3 over 1, so we'd say 1 over 3. That's how you can tell if lines are perpendicular. The key feature of perpendicular lines is we've got a right angle where they meet. This next example tells us to figure out whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. To figure that out, we need to find the slope of each line. So we'll do that first. After we find the slope of each line, my M1 means slope of line 1, M2 would mean slope of line 2. On this first one, I notice that the signs are different and the fractions are flipped. That the math way of saying that is they are opposite inverses, which is exactly what we need for perpendicular. In the second set of lines, we see both slopes come out to be negative five thirds. Since the slopes are the same, these lines have to be parallel. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do these later. Pause the video. Take a minute to figure out what's going on in this problem, and then we'll talk about it. We're asked to find the rate of change of the diameter 
over time. So we need to figure out how much the diameter changes. That's going to be on top over time. When I see my diameter starts at 141, well, it doesn't start there. It's my biggest one. That's like my Y2 minus my Y1 over time. And my time goes from 2005 to 1965. Notice I put my Y2 first on top, so I put my X2 first on bottom. Y1 second on top, so Y2, X2 second on bottom. X, I said that wrong. Y1 came second on top, so X1 has to come second on the bottom. We do our subtraction here, and we see we get 4 over 40, which is equal to 1 over 10. And we got to make sure we use our correct inches, our correct units. That's inches per year. We can't stop there. We just found the rate of change. This tree gets bigger by one tenth of an inch every year. We want to know what's going on in 2065. That's 60 years later. So I take this rate of one tenth and I multiply it by 60 to see what's going on six years later, 60 years later. So it's 60 years times one inch per 10 years. The years cancel out and I see I increase by six inches, which means my new diameter would be six inches bigger than it was in 2005. So 141 plus six is 147 inches. Done. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own. Other than that, the lesson has come to an end.